and here we're not rolling. I mean, I kind of wish we were, because... Summer rolling. Should be crazy. Hey. Let's be real, okay? Coachella is postponed. Bro. No one's rolling. Bro. Imagine rolling right now. Oh my God, fuck that. Like, you're just like on one, and you're like watching the news, and you're just like gr- grinding I, I your can't, teeth. No, I can't. Hell no. No, I'm literally so stressed that this has never happened to me, but I woke up in the middle of the night the other night because I had jaw pain. Because From I'm what? clenching my jaw. Oh, when you, when when you I sleep? When I sleep, because I'm so fucking anxiety ridden about this whole riot the rioting the black lives matters like the coronavirus aliens like fucking <laughs> bleh, just feels like too much you know what i mean i'm just like i think me i think about everything too much so my jaw i was sleeping like this i guess and i woke up and i was like oh what the fuck out of my sleep i think the most mature thing i ever did is i got fitted for um Oh, one of those TMJ things? It's like, yeah, I went to my dentist and he like made this mold and I and I wear it. And, but like, I can literally see like where I grind down. You wear it at night? I Okay, look. I went <laughs> That's and got hot. It. I went and got it. <laughs> hey guys. Hey, that was really great fucking hey you. Let me just, uh, let me just. <laughs> I gotta go to sleep now. <laughs> oh my God. I'm so dead. Uh, I wore it for like three months and then I was like, all right, screw this. Cause it actually wow. kind of made it worse. It like hurt my teeth cause it's so hard. Hard, yeah. You know? And so I'd wake up and it like, it hurt more than not wearing it. So it's like, it's like in my bathroom somewhere, but I kind of, I kind of abandoned it. Fuck that. Yeah. But I went and got it made, which was like, that's at least a, that's you a tried. Step, you know? yeah. yeah. And your teeth right now are just like, <laughs> they're like whittled away. I had to get all new teeth. <laughs> Oh, well, we can always buy new teeth. Yeah. <laughs> Don't worry about it. I've never, I, I, I had my wisdom teeth pulled out uh, a few months ago. Just a few months ago? Six months ago. Now check this out. I, I put this off for four years okay because i've never like i've never had surgery do you have any wood because i want to there we go yes yeah okay i've never had surgery wow. i'm like the biggest pussy when it comes to all Me that too. Stuff. getting put under i'm like i'll never wake up Exa- exactly <laughs> me i'm just i'm exactly the same right and um and the only reason why i did is uh i watched david dobrik get his wisdom teeth out and so i texted him because he was like laughing he was like he, he, he like went and shot a vlog and he was like eating food of and course so, he shot a vlog uh, yeah so i was like all right so i texted and I'm like, yo, what's your, who's your dentist? And he connected me with this dentist and um, I went in and that's my new dentist now. And he was like, oh yeah, it's going to be super easy. You'll be in and out in 10 minutes. 10 minutes? I'm not lying. I thought, I thought he was lying. So I had my mom drive down to LA. She stayed at my house because I was so freaked out. Uh, and I went in and he gave me the, the gas. Laughing gas. The laughing gas. And I didn't even know that he did it. What? Like literally, I, I put it on my Instagram. It's it's like a few months back. But like literally, I didn't. I was like, I, I put the laughing gas on. I sat there, and then he's like, "All right, cool." And I'm like, "Wait, we you did it?" And he's like, "Yeah, here's here's your teeth." And oh like, my god, that's kind of like, scary. He's and then you're like, "My why is my butthole sore?" <laughs> And he's like, don't worry about it. But it was like the easiest thing ever. And I was eating, I, I ate a, a hamburger that night. Like I was what? eating french fries. Yeah, it was the best experience ever, ever. He's amazing. Is laughing gas crazy? I've never had it. I'm too paranoid. I don't really remember. Does it like kind of knock you out? It like, I, it, I wouldn't say knocked me out. Like I wasn't unconscious, but like I just like wasn't there. Like, whoa, I, sounds it, rad. It just, yeah, it, it went like, <laughs> I went like, hopefully, like, I hope anything traumatic that happens to me, someone could be there with like nitrous and just like put it in my face. I know people get addicted to it. Like some dentists, like, did you ever see Little Shop of Horrors? The, the, Steve Martin That's and what the, 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 is plant. That the plant movie. Yeah, yeah of course. Remember Steve Martin? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like loving the, the nitrous. Like I wonder if any of them just like have a setup at home. Bro, you know, I'm they're, sure. They're having a bad day and they're like, give me 50 cc's. I bet. Yeah. I bet. Fuck. It's like at their disposal. Like that'd be rad, you know, just <laughs> fucked up all the time. Yeah. <laughs> My God, I've never done it. I'm too scared. That's, I, I didn't want to go to sleep, but I was down yeah. for the, I was down for the nitrous. I don't like not feeling in control. Same. Have you ever done mushrooms? Yeah. Oh my God, how? I don't know. I've done them a lot. Well, a okay. lot? I did. Okay, when I was 16, uh, I was smoking weed a lot. Obviously, I, you know, my parents. Isn't it crazy all the shit that you did when you were a teenager that you thought you were getting away with? And you're like, oh, my parents will never find out. Yeah. Now I'm like, I'm 31. And I just, I, I could see like my, my nieces and stuff. Like if they yeah. like steal a candy bar, I'm like, yo, you, you took a candy bar. So it's like, I was, you such, I was such a dumbass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your parents knew you were fucked up. So they drug tested me. I never passed a drug test, all for weed. I failed for weed. Wow. Um, 
And so there was like six months where they like were like drug testing me. And so the only I was like, well, what can I do that doesn't come up on a drug test? And it was mushrooms. Damn, and that doesn't come up on a drug test. No, psilocybin. The more you know. Now I don't know if they got some new tests. I'm saying this is like 15 years ago. Oh my and audience I was just, just getting goes piss tested. <laughs> my audience goes and gets <laughs> mushrooms and then it fails their drug test. Yeah. Like, Fuck you, Travis <laughs> Mills. Fuck you. But I never did it to like get fucked up, right? Like I was like all in. I thought I was like so smart and like I was like all in like metaphysics and like psychology and like i wanted to like unlock this like part of my brain and it really did does it um well uh, there's layers to the story i'm oh like boy. i'm like okay. an onion oh so boy. the first time i did mushrooms one it was like two nights before halloween and it was only like me and two of my friends that were gonna do it but we were with like a bunch of a bunch of people and um so we eat them and then everyone else that we were with wanted to go to a halloween party oh my god so no it starts hitting as soon as we pull up to this halloween party oh no and there's like people in full like scary costumes there's like strobe lights not Fuck the best that not the best place to to do mushrooms for your first time and i remember seeing someone that i knew uh who like lived with us and like went to school with us and stuff and he was like this big like kind of you know he's like a football player and like a big like athletic jockey dude uh-huh. and um, i looked at his hands and he had baby hands like and that's when i was like Oh shit, it's <laughs> it's working. Like, okay, this is happening. And so like I stared at his hands for like probably like five minutes. Stop. And I think I even like tried to like touch you one. Like, why is it so yeah. small? <laughs> <laughs> He's like, what's up, dude? And the hands are this big. And as soon as that happened, I was like, all right, I gotta get the fuck out of here. Stop. So we left. Um and we went back to my friend's house. And I guess like a couple hours and then like, you know, me and me and my other friends that, that were were on mushrooms, we like were walking around the neighborhood and I started seeing like for me, it's like the weird thing is like in nature, it brings like a kind of like a personality trait to nature. Like I was able to see like, f- like not faces, but like I was able to see like characteristics and like personalities and plants. And really? Stuff like that. Plants had personalities? Like, yeah. And I could, it's really hard to explain, but like he had like wood cabinets, like wood grain, like real wood. Uh-huh. And I could see like, I could see like faces in the wood and stuff like that. Whoa. Maybe it's like opened a new, like world that we actually just can't see but it's there 100 percent. Right? and i've done shrooms like i went to like a, a botanical gardens place oh in gosh. riverside and like that i took them during the day and that was like the most pe- i cried like i was like walking in like rose gardens and like it was like so Aww. peaceful but back to my first time yeah 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 Fuck so everyone Halloween comes party. back right and we're sitting there and um we're all like sitting in a circle like legs crossed you know <laughs> fucking kumbaya and then they're like yo travis this girl is outside and it was this girl that I, like i it wasn't my girlfriend or anything but we were like dating and she was she was just crazy right uh and it was like super on and off super like toxic and stuff and um i was like no don't don't let her in you know and i was like she's crazy (laughs) and all of a sudden the door gets kicked in and she kicked in my friend's front door she kicked it in she kicked it in and she comes up i grew up with some delinquents by the way uh and so she kicks in the door my friend's sitting to the left of me She's like, what's up? She's like, what's up? I heard everything you said about me because she had like her ear up to the door. She spits on my friend to the left of me. She comes up to me and she's like, fuck you, Travis. And she slaps me. Oh my God, while you're on mushrooms? While I'm on mushrooms. Oh my God. And then she's like, come outside. You know, come outside. We're going to fuck you up. And she rolled up there with two other dudes that like I didn't know. But she brought these guys to like try to beat me up or like jump me. What? You know? And um, one of my other friends like pulled out a gun and then... I go outside to my truck that's like parked out there and she keyed my whole truck (gasps) and slashed all my tires. (laughs) And you're on mushrooms experiencing this? For the first this? time. For oh the first my time. God. And she probably looked crazy, right? It like, was like, I'll never forget that. Like, I I've, I don't think I've ever told this story publicly either. So this is my first time really talking about it. Hell yeah. But uh, I'm, I'm instantly transported back. Did her my face look house. scary? I didn't know. what well, I started laughing. Like, she slapped me and I just like started laughing because I, I think like I didn't know if it was real or not. Ooh, that's scary. You know? Yeah, but like, okay, so what is mushrooms like? Because I'm too scared to do any drugs. That's a bad first experience, by the way. Like, yeah. don't judge my first no, experience off, off of yours. Yeah. You're, you've been like the 17th person that's been like, yeah, the first time I did it was terrible. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, maybe I'm not going to do this. But what does it like make you feel like internally? Like, do you feel fucked up? No. Like, how would you describe the feeling? Because I don't like feeling fucked up where I like don't have control. I'd say it's like very introspective. Like you, like you, you think too much. 
I've every time like I've besides that time every yeah. time I've I've done mushrooms I've walked away with like more peace oh. and it always it kind of like recenters me and like realigns you know say, like yeah. the things that that I want to like focus on in life uh-huh. and that'll last for like probably like six months and then it'll kind of like fade away oh my god so can I tell you I went to my cardiologist yesterday because I thought I was having a heart attack because of all my anxiety I've done that I literally go like once a month and my doctor does he does like. The EKG, the blood work, everything. And Does he's he like, roll his eyes at you? No, he's so nice because okay. he knows like I have fucking really bad panic disorder. Yeah. And he's like, okay, we're going to talk about this again. It's just your anxiety. Because I get like stabbing chest pain where mm-hmm. it feels like someone's taking a knife. Yeah. And like where I'm like, oh, like I can't, you know. And feels then like I, you can't breathe. Yeah, yeah. And then I had like the jaw pain. And then it was really weird because I was just because of all this stuff that's going on. I'm so I'm such an empath. I kind of absorb everything that's going on instead of like being able to keep it outside of me. And I read too much and I listen to too much of the news and then I get overwhelmed. And then I was sitting there like watching like a nice movie with Tommy and I was sitting on the couch and I like started having the like a knife pain in my chest. And I was like, just calm down, just calm down. Then I'm like, oh, maybe it's heartburn because my doctor's always like, try taking an antacid. Maybe it's heartburn, right? Pepsid AC. Right. Pepsid AC sponsored, sponsored. sponsored by, <laughs> but not really because it gets really bad. So I took this, I took some like Tums and then five minutes later I broke out in like a cold sweat and then I started like shaking. Have you, do you ever get panic attacks where you start shivering? 100%. So I start shaking. My heart rate goes up to 130 because I have, of course, like you a, have a heart monitor here. Oh damn. You have a heart monitor. Oh, I have an EKG little thing. I have, I'm insane. That's kind of why I got my Apple watch. Someone told me to get one because of that so they could see, like, study you better. But well, there's um, a disclaimer on there, though. They're like, hey, this will not. Uh, accurate. Yeah, they're like, hey, this won't, like, pre- you know, it's not guaranteed, like, for a heart attack and stuff like that. So you can't, like, really rely on it. But that's the main reason. Sorry they have to you. say that because if someone does have a heart attack and die, they'll be like, well, they have the EKG yeah, app. Why yeah. they like, predict it? You know, but it does do a good job, I heard. So anyway, so I'm sweating. I'm shaking. I'm. My heart rate goes up to 130, and then I'm normally in these situations, like I take a Valium and everything goes away, right? So I was like, okay, I'm taking my Valium. I took the Valium, like 30 minutes later, it didn't go away. I was like, what the fuck? And so I had to take more, so I just basically drugged myself, so I was like fucking incapacitated. And then uh, next day I was like, I have to go to the doctor, because I felt like I really had a heart attack. And then I go there, and he's like, you're fine, you didn't have a heart attack. He's like, I can guarantee your heart for the next 20 years. He's like, but there is something I do want you to do. And I was like, what? And he's like, I want you to try mushrooms. Mm. And I was like, bitch, I'm fucking scared to like get a B12 shot. Yeah. Like I can't even like literally before he gave me a B12 shot, I'm like, is this, what's this going to do? Is it going to make me feel weird? What's going to happen? Am I going to have a, going to make me shake? What's going <laughs> to, I'm so scared of drugs, like so scared of drugs. And which is weird. Cause I used to do drugs and did Coke and I was on Same Adderall me, for yeah. years. And like in my early twenties, like I didn't really care if I died. Cause they just do everything. Exactly. Okay. We're back. Okay. Sorry. I, my phone started ringing and I have to record this on my phone cause I'm low class and don't have like a separate phone to do it um but anyway i was telling you so my doctor's like you need to try mushrooms and i was like i'm way too scared and he's like but i'm telling you it will reset everything in your brain Mm -hmm. and you'll be fine like for a while and i'm kind of like okay but i just don't think i'd be able to handle it if i had a panic attack and he's like and i was like what if i have a panic attack and he's like don't worry if you do it only last 24 hours i was like i can barely handle a panic attack for like 30 minutes 24 hours i would literally jump off i don't think it would last 24 hours i've had two bad trips out of probably like from mushrooms 20 times yeah but the uh, the one bad trip i had was because i drank alcohol um and i should have never done that okay and then the second bad trip was i ate too much Oh, you're not supposed to eat? No, no, no. I ate too much, mu- too many mushrooms. Oh. <laughs> I'm such a dumbass. <laughs> oh, not supposed to eat when you take the mushroom? <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with me? No, you can eat. Travis is like, why am I here? <laughs> I'm dead. Um, okay, so you took too many. Yeah. Maybe if I just took like a little tiny piece of a well, stem. Well, there's microdosing. Would that do even there's, anything? There's microdosing, That's what which I've heard. a lot of people are doing right now. You can do it with a doctor, right? Um, I don't know. I don't know about doctors, but I know that there's like a ton of like naturopaths and like all that stuff that are. Have you tried microdosing? I haven't. No, but there's there's people. Okay, so like everyone in Silicon Valley right now is microdosing LSD. Oh god, which is crazy. I've never done anything like. They're like, that. I'm gonna come up with a new war game. I it's need to literally <laughs> it's that that's some shit that's happening, and these 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 you know CEOs and these these inventors are like coming up with these you know world changing ideas because um, of tripping on LSD. It's not tripping. It's like it's like 
enough before it's like it just unlocks like certain sides of your brain you i know? could get with that as long as i'm not like completely fucking out of my mind yeah because i'm naturally out of my mind so it's like anything extra just kind of pushes me over the edge 100 percent. like i'm already kind of i already feel like i'm tripping all the time yeah you know no me I mean? too i mean i'm a hypochondriac I've, oh for I've sure had adhd my whole life yeah i didn't have anxiety until i was 18 and i started doing drugs like that's what drug what, do you think triggered it coke I did coke too. I wonder if no, because I had anxiety since. And I was that little. was the, the see. I I never did, and that's why yeah. I like came to such. You know, like the first time, my first panic attack was on New Year's when I was 18. So this was like 2007 and I got put in the back of an ambulance because I thought I was having a heart attack. Yeah. And, you know, they did the heart, they, the EKG and they're like, you know, your heart rate is, you know, 180. And, uh, and then I was like, okay. And that shit lasted, you know, an hour is so scary. And then I had one the next day when I was driving and then, you know, I had them the next day oh my and gosh. I just had like chronic chronic you know debilitating anxiety Ugh. to the point where like i didn't drive my car for a year and a half yeah because then you're i've had that happen because you get so scared that it's gonna happen again and you're, you're gonna pass out like my yeah. biggest fear i get it really bad when i'm driving mm -hmm. um because my my biggest fear is that i'm going to have a heart attack or pass out and crash my car yeah and so but I don't take anything. Like, that's why, like... I can't believe you don't take anything because I cannot function. Like, I had to get put on medication really young because I was, like, freaking out in school, like, going to the nurse because, like, I just was shaking and, like, I just had really bad... Like, I had trauma in my childhood and it turned into, like, anxiety. Yeah. But, okay, so... You, it started at like at 18. Mm -hmm. You don't take anything for it. When you went to the hospital and were in the ambulance, what did they give you? Do you remember? I don't. I, want, I, I don't really remember. Did they remember. give you something? I think I think they gave me like a, it was probably Valium or, or something Ativan like that. Yeah, or Ativan. Ativan is slow. Is that like what slows your heart rate down? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, but I just remember I kept asking them. I'd one, I'd never been in an ambulance before. Yeah. Two, I just kept asking them like, am I going to die? And what'd you they know? say? And they were like, they couldn't tell me like no for sure, but they're like, we think you're going to be okay, you know, because they didn't, they didn't attack. know. Did like, they take you to the hospital? Yeah. I got put in like a bed and stuff like that. Wow. And then that's when they were like, you know, like congratulations. Like, you know, you just have anxiety. You have a panic. You just had a panic. Did attack. the doctor come tell you? Yeah. And then, um, my mom is like, you know, she was a nurse at that time and she like runs like surgery centers now and stuff, but she was really the only one in my family that understood. Like my dad's really old school and you know, to his credit, it's like, I didn't have any of this when I was growing Before, up. So yeah, all of a sudden, you know, there I'm like, oh, I have debilitating, debilitating panic attacks, you know, yeah. call the cop. I'd always do, I'd be like, call 911. Always you know, I'd me be, too. I'd be at the, at the house. I've had studio sessions with producers. Like when I was first getting a record deal, you know, and, and I got set up with these two producers. Um, and the first time I met them, I was in a studio, I was in the vocal booth and I, I had a panic attack and I, I told them over the mic, I was like, yo, call 911 right now. And they didn't know what the fuck to do because, you know, um, and it I always happens. You, I've done this too. It always happens when you're not supposed to. Yeah. Like right? high stress situations or like, you know, and then that kind of keeps you from like wanting to do stuff. Like when I first got popular on Vine, I had all these meetings with like big agencies and I almost didn't go because I had gotten off of all of my medicine completely at the time and I wasn't leaving my house. Like that's yeah. what I, when I was making vines, I was just in my house making them. But then all of a sudden all these pe people wanted to take meetings and all these companies like MTV and ICM and UTA and they're like, we want to meet with her. And I was like, uh, fuck, like, cause I got scared. And then I was like, I got to get on something because I can't live my life. Like I was like you, like I, I didn't want to drive a car because mm -hmm. I would freak out while I was driving and like be scared and have to pull over. And I didn't want to go too far from my house. Cause like, what if I had one need to get back home? You know what I mean? Like I wouldn't go visit friends that lived in like orange County. It really fucks up your life. Like people don't realize yeah, and you just kind of, it's always that thing in the back of your head, like, God, I really hope I don't have a panic attack Always. Right now. but you know, I'm I thought so that when I was coming here. I was like, Aww. but the one thing is I know that you have, have them, them too. Have them too, so I'm, you're so safe. I was like, yeah, and so I'll I was like, if, any, if anyone is going to understand, you know, it's you. Um, and I'll take care of you, and actually I would just give you one of my Valium, <laughs> and it would change your life, and you would never have be worried about having one again. Do you want to know what like, my ghetto remedy is? I don't know if it's like, if it's remedy, but uh, I take a bottle of water, and I pour it on my head. That's not I'm, a ghetto remedy. freaking out. Out. And I've, I've talked about it like in therapy and stuff. And my therapist like thinks it's, it's to, it's something that like grounds me and like yeah. brings me back. Cause you know, it's like, um, 
when you have anxiety and you're having a panic attack, a lot of times it's like dissociation, right? You're yep. dissociating from like what's going on. Reality. Reality. Yep. And so like you're kind of like, diff- you know, you're just in this different place and you're kind of like looking down on yourself almost. And like, mm-hmm. and so, yeah, when I do that, it almost like brings me back and then. I kind of like notice the sensation because I get like, I get like sweaty. Oh God. I get like, Same. you know, I feel, I feel, I start hyperventilating. Yep. I can't like, I can't breathe. And then like every time I blink my eyes, I'm like, okay, is this going to be the last That's time not- that my eyes are open? Yeah. Dude, we're exactly the same. It's so crazy. You know, it, what you did say is the, the pouring the water on your head is a really good thing. Also, um, jumping in a cold shower, like will knock it off right away. Mm-hmm. Like put your cold shower on freezing cold and just jump in. And if you're not near a shower, like sticking your head in the freezer is another one or like biting a lemon. So I just saw some dude on Instagram yeah. and he was like, yo, yeah, biting a lemon because there's something it to, like, shocks you. The Anything acidity, to shock yeah. you out of it will help. But I mean, if you have them as bad as I do and I've done all the things, I've done the cold showers, I've done the like lemon biting I've tried instead of taking a Valium at times and it doesn't always work, but there's also like great herbs. Um, there's one herb called ashwagandha root. I take that every day. You do? Yeah. That helps, right? Yeah. Yeah. So that's a great one. Um, you know, natural stuff's always going to be less potent than an actual, like taking like a Valium or something like that. But, um, the cool thing I will say is that like, I've tried Ativan, I've tried Xanax, I've tried, um, Boost Bar, I've tried, what else did they try to put me on? Um, I've tried a bunch of the like benzos to, that are supposed to calm you down. And the only one that I really do like is Valium. And it's a really old drug. And basically what it does is like you don't. F- the thing with me is I don't like to feel like I'm on drugs. I don't like to feel affected. All it does is just honestly make you feel really peaceful. And so I'm not recommending anyone go start taking Valium every day because it is a drug. I and- think I had to take that when it, before they told me to take something an hour before I went in to get my wisdom teeth pulled out. That was probably it, it, it was then. Valium. And then like by the time I got in there, I wasn't like I wasn't like freaking out. I was still like a little apprehensive, but I was like able to like sit in the chair and like, yeah. not be, like I got to get get the fuck out of here. Yeah. Yeah. No, I take literally five milligrams, which is nothing. And it really helps. Like if I'm having, usually if I'm having a panic attack and if I have to take 10, I will. But I mean, there's people like, I I remember, I remember being friends with people in college that would like take like 10 milligrams of Valium and drink on it. They call it like a V and V, a vodka and a Valium and they would wow. get so fucked up and they were fine. So I was like, okay, if they're going to drink vodka on it and stuff, I can just take it normally. It's not going to hurt yeah. me, you know, but it does really help. And the cool thing about Valium as opposed to like Xanax is that Valium stays in your system for like five days. Oh, okay. So if you have a really bad panic attack and you take a Valium. It'll keep working. It'll work for, it takes a while for it to clear out of your system. Whereas like Xanax, it goes through you really quick. So it's like Xanax, if you're having a panic attack, boom, it knocks it out right away. But then it goes out of your system fast. So it's like, that's why I think a lot of people, I mean, I have so many people that listen to this podcast that like are really interested in mental health or do have panic attacks because I do talk about them a lot. And that's like my biggest like recommendation. You know what I mean? Yeah. And some people smoke weed and they're like, that helps my anxiety. But for me, it makes my shit so much worse. It's 50, 50 for me. I mean, I just, I stopped smoking weed in September. Mm -hmm. How do you Uh, feel? I feel great. I, I, want to i'm going a year before i smoke again so i got like i'm like what eight eight and a half months do you nine, miss nine it months no not really it's weird it's like i went i went a week here's what happened i got really sick from what i, I got like uh like a sign i get chronic sign you know what's weird is like after i stopped smoking i haven't knock on wood again yeah i haven't been getting chronic sinus infections oh and um all of this came to me after like two months of not smoking but um now look i was i was smoking a shit ton of weed i was smoking about a pound of weed a month how yeah. much weed were you smoking a day? Oh, at least a half ounce. Are you serious? At least, yeah. And I've done, you know, I've done that like since I was, I've smoked weed since I was, you know, 15. Are you serious? So I got really sick. Um, and you wouldn't and feel like being weird, being fucked up all day? I'm one of those people that like, I would like, I was like, I'd wake up, I'd smoke. I'd eat breakfast. I'd smoke. What? I'd smoke. I'd go to. I'd go on like a five mile run. I'd You'd be able from, to run. Yeah. What the hell? I'd like get back from my run. I'd <laughs> smoke. Um, but it didn't. It, you were like a functioning. Oh, I've I functioned head. super high. I functioned super high, and I think it really helps like my my ADHD, um, and it like you know it brings this like side of me to like 
if I didn't respond to an email and like, if I didn't, you know, maybe if I, if I was in a bad mood when I talked to this person and, you know, I'll be like, Oh, you know what? Let me, let me call them and, and let me like, just like apologize or like, you know, Whoa. just kind of like, it gives me this like kind of different perspective on things. So um, it was good for you. It was good. I was definitely smoking probably way too much. Was it giving you any anxiety at all? I get see, and I, and I thought when I stopped, I was like, Oh cool. I'll never have anxiety again. Right. And that's not the case. Like if, mm. you know, if anything, I've had a little bit more, but, um, you got to think like part of like the whole culture is, you know, you're with your friends, you're passing shit around. So like I was like sharing saliva with like all oh. my friends on a daily basis. Like no wonder I was getting sick so much, you know? And it's like, yo, you're at a party and like, or like you're, you know, you're at an event and someone comes up and it's like, yo, let me hit that. And if like, you're cool with them, you know, I know. And like, everyone's like, yeah, yeah fucking you'll, go ahead. You'll pass it. And, um, and so that's why when all this coronavirus shit happened, I was like, God, thank God I don't smoke. Jeez. Did you have like a G pen or something like that? Or no, what? I was just rolling backwards. So okay. I'd roll up like, you know, two or three gram backwards, like every, wow. every hour. Um, wow, that's so crazy that you could smoke that much and would like live your life. I've always been like a smoker and not like a drinker, if that makes sense. Yeah, you don't like drinking. Not, uh, you know, I I'll, I like beer every now and then, yeah. but like I don't drink hard alcohol. I don't like alcohol at all. Yeah, I like have tried to be cool. Like when I was growing up, I would try to like be like, yeah, like fuck yeah, let's take some fireball shots. But like, I feel like I'm like allergic to alcohol because every time I drink it, I immediately feel super sick. You get sick. Never once have I drank alcohol and been like, yeah, bro, this is fun. Like, I'm immediately like, I'm fucking, I don't feel good. Like, I, I, it doesn't work well with me for some reason. Yeah, when I drink a lot of beer, I just get tired. Yeah, you know? I, alcohol makes me tired. Yeah, like low, like low energy. Yeah. And so, like, with weed, I've always been able to, like, smoke and, like, just function, you know? And it um, gives you energy? I would say so. Or maybe it was just, like, the ritual of, like, you know, it would just, like, keep me, it would just, like, keep me going. Like, I could, like, stay in a studio until, like, four in the morning. Do like, you drink coffee? I drink probably, like, 15 cups of coffee a day. Well, no wonder you have fucking anxiety, yeah. <laughs> bro. That's the number one thing you gotta I cut switched, out. I, I'll even drink, like, I'll have, like, two cups of regular coffee, and then I'll have a cup of decaf. So, like, I just love the taste of coffee. I'm just, like, addicted to okay, coffee. Okay, but I'm gonna tell you how to get rid of your anxiety. Stop drinking coffee. Stop <laughs> drinking coffee. I drink no caffeine. Wow. Zero. Well, I don't drink Not soda. even fucking Coca-Cola. I drink nothing yeah. that has caffeine in it. If it has caffeine in it, guess what? You don't drink Not it. Not for me. Because <laughs> I notice, no matter what, even if it's the most, like, minuscule, it triggers me. You know? I can't even have one cup of coffee. I can't even have a sip of coffee. That's Damn. how serious it is. I'm like, <laughs> like I'll right deal away. With I'll deal with it for coffee. Really? I, I love, like, I love it. I, it is, like, my... You know, it's so you need the coffee for the energy. I just need. I just. I'll drink coffee at, at twelve a. I'll, I'll drink coffee at midnight and go Tommy to sleep. Does that? Yeah, I can go to sleep. On while coffee. Drinking, I'll I'll drink a cup of coffee while I'm in bed watching Netflix, about to go to bed. Does that make like sense? not decaf? Yeah, regular coffee. Like that reminds me of when I used to be on Adderall. Like people would be like, "How do you sleep?" But like for some reason, for at some point in my life, for five years, Adderall worked really great for me. I was like on my antidepressant and Adderall and like Adderall actually can make your antidepressant work better, which is mm. crazy. I didn't know that. And I had like five years where everything was like really great and I was on this stuff. And then all of a sudden, I don't know where I got really sick. And then my, I developed a heart murmur from the Adderall and they were like, okay, got to get off the Adderall. But I remember being the same way, like being able to take Adderall like midday and still go to bed at like 9 p.m. I feel like Adderall wouldn't work on me because I have ADHD, right? It'd be it'd do the opposite. It'd calm Make me down. Make you calm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you could try it. Have you ever tried it? So they put me on Ritalin Ugh. when Ugh. I was like, yeah, when I was like 12 and it made me feel like a zombie and I was like, fuck this. I'm not taking it. And that was kind of like my thing with, with prescription drugs. It was like, I did that and I was just like, nope. Not You've never me. tried an antidepressant. Uh, so when I had my first panic attack, uh, two weeks after they tried to put me on, um, Prozac, Lexapro, Lexapro, and it's supposed it, to be the best antidepressant. I'm actually going to try it soon. It made it everything. I took it for literally a week and it made my panic attacks worse. Great. Like, Maybe I won't be trying it. It made me like manic. Um, this one, I was really? 18. Yeah. And I was just like, all right, not for me. That's scary because I'm supposed to add it to like my effector right now because I take effector and like I take the lowest dose possible because I don't want to go up on it because it makes your heart race. And they were like, well, let's try adding. They added Prozac to it and I didn't like that. And then they're like, well, let's try Lexapro. So that's like my next thing that I'm supposed to try. And now I'm scared. Well, don't take my I, I don't I, I don't I don't have like a 
great track record. But that's the only one drugs. you've ever tried. Yeah. Oh, you if you should try more. I mean, not just push pills on you because yeah. you're like you're functioning fine with your 17 cups of coffee a day Thank and you. your fucking <laughs> and your ashwagandha. Thank you. I'm not trying to push pills on you, but if you if you find at a point in your life that you're like I can't handle this. You should try something else because you don't have to live like that. Like I was not leaving my house, you know, and I was like, I'm never going to try a drug. I mean, I don't want to be on drugs, you know. I think one thing that really helped me was running, getting into running because I always hated running when I was a kid. Like I'd walk the mile, you know, in school. Same. Yeah. Ew. Ugh. I hated it. Uh, and you don't get triggered when your heart rate goes up from no, running. No, no. That's I like do. where I don't have any anxiety is like working out and running. You're so lucky. Um, Because I know, I think because it's intentional, you know, and it's like where it's like I'm doing it to myself. Yeah. So it's like an element of like maybe control. Um, And yeah, running. I don't even run like that far, but I'll do like five miles and I'll just feel like. Hot. You like run to your kitchen and run back. You're like, yeah. man, what a workout. <laughs> <laughs> you um, feel good from it. Yeah. A lot I of just, people say that. I love it. It's it's really cool. And it's I think it definitely like changed my life. I also got an infrared sauna. You did in mm, your house? Yeah. What does that look like? It's a big cedar wood. It's really nice actually. There's like glass it's like glass, like a glass like thing in a door and like two glass sides so you can still see out so you don't get claustrophobic. It fits two people. Um I got a little it came with like a like a scent like a thing for uh essential oils like lavender that like heats stuff. up and Ooh. shit so like i put like i put like eucalyptus i put Ooh. like lavender i sound like martha stewart right no now. that shit actually uh, you're, you're saying all the things that people are supposed but another thing my doctor told me you need to sit in a sauna yeah i do it every day i do 30 minutes a day and sweat it out sweat everything that's out. what he told me too and i don't yeah. have a sauna um, I got a company that, that I can hook you I up with. I have a steam shower. We actually, I think we Mine's do Mine's in my garage. Yet. You, I built wow. it myself. Like, it's super easy. Like, wow. they'll deliver it. You can set it up in, like, an hour. Um, I hate being really hot, though. Does it suck or what? Once again, I'm, like, pushing myself. And, like, I got, like, Bluetooth. So, like, it comes with, like, a Bluetooth thing. And so I put it, connect my phone, and there's, like, speakers in there. You listen to music. And um, the infrared lights. So it's, like, red is, you know... I'm not an expert, so don't quote right, right. me on this. But like red is, I think, supposed to be good for like muscle recovery and skin. And then like the blue light is like good for aging and all of these other. It's wow. like di the different lights correspond to like different kind of, you know, treatments. Um, you do look really young for 31. I didn't even thanks. know you were in your 30s yet. Thanks. I thought you were like 27. Oh, I appreciate that. Yeah, you look young. Thanks. I got gray hair, but. Uh, but it's like not really. It's like nice and peppered in. <laughs> Are you going to dye it? No, I used to. And then like four years ago, I was like, fuck this. You're just going to leave it? Now it's like, now it's like, yeah, it's something that I just own. Good for you. Thanks. It looks really good on you. It doesn't look like you don't look older. I appreciate it. Yeah, it's like a nice juxtaposition because I've always been told I have a baby face. So you it's look like, very young. It's like, boom, I'm baby face and like, gray haired. <laughs> they're like, this kid's somewhere between 14 and 45. <laughs> like we can't Benjamin tell. Button. They like don't, they like really don't know what's happening. <laughs> Okay, guys, we're going to take a quick break, and then we will be right back with Travis Mills on Worst Firsts. Okay, we're back. <laughs> that was the quickest break ever. Okay, because I don't, like, play the commercials while the guests are here, so I give them, like, five seconds to have a, a drink of water, and then I fucking bring it That's all really back. That's really nice. You're welcome. Thank you. I'm so glad we're having this, like, really progressive conversation about mental health. Yeah, and it's something that I never really opened up. Like, I'd say, you know, because a lot of people know me from music. Like, when I got started making music, 10 years ago. Yeah. Um, and that was something I never talked about. Never did any interviews about it. Never, you know, why talked about it because I mean, I think back then too, like it People was like, judged you on it. it was still like very like stigmatized and mm -hmm. you know, that's my fault. Like I have like a lot, not a lot of regret, but I'm like, fuck, like I should have been talking about this, Yeah. you know, because it was something that, that I really struggled with and you know, who knows like who I could have helped. But that's like when I started my ADHD podcast, it's like something I really talked about. Um, and just like the messages and, and you know, DMS and comments that I get from, from people that are like, yo, it's, it's so nice to know that, you know, you struggle with these things and you know, you're doing your best to not let it affect your life. And it gives me a lot of hope. It's like, I love that shit. Yeah. I think it's like, it's crazy that it's so stigmatized or and it's becoming less stigmatized, obviously, because more and more people are coming forward and saying, yeah, I, I go through this too. And it's actually so crazy how many people experience this, isn't yeah. it? Like you walk around in your daily life and you look around and you meet other people and you don't realize like you, you feel so, it feels so personal. It feels like, oh my God, I'm the only one who's like going through this and having these feelings and having panic attacks. And then 
you talk about it and everyone's like, oh my God, I have the same thing. And you, so many people go yeah. through it, you know? Yo, you know what I got I to gotta put you on to is I did a podcast with John Feldman and um, John Paul Crimmy. I think it's John Paul Crimdy or Crimmy. Uh-huh. Um, he's a breathwork coach. This oh my dude, God. Tommy told, Tommy did the podcast too. And he said like, it like he did it with, with John and, and John. He did the podcast. Yeah. He yeah said, so I just did it. My episode, I don't think it's out yet. Uh-huh. Oh, sorry guys. Uh, yeah. But I'm talking about it anyways. Yeah. And that was, that podcast was kind of the first real time that I opened up about anxiety and like my, like, you know, stuff like that uh, to like on another platform that like wasn't my own. Right. And right. it was because like, that's what they want to focus on. Right. And so they're like, do you have any instances with anxiety? I'm like, Oh my God, oh what, my do you, God. what do you want to know? And so at the end, John Paul had just such amazing, amazing energy. And this dude, like he has like such a cool background. He, he toured with like, you know, all these like dope bands. Like he was like, you know, good Charlotte security guard for a while. Wow. He was like, he's like all in hardcore and he comes from the music scene. And, um, you know, he created this like breathing technique that like, you know, helps with anxiety. It helps with stress. It helps with anger issues. It helps with, you know, abandonment issues. It's like a form of therapy. Um, and so after that podcast, I was like, yo dude, I need to get your number. Yeah. I need to do this. Um, and I did a breathwork session and like literally it's like 50 minutes of intense breathing, right? Like you don't stop. Don't you get really high and fucked up from it? So that, so the first three minutes that you're going to do it, you're going to think you're going to die. Well, I'm talking about you and me because we have crazy anxiety. Not, Not everyone's doing like that. This no, ever. no, no. You're going to be like, oh my God, I don't know if I could do this. I don't, I feel, I, you know, you start to like tingle and like, you know, you get like lobster hands to Ew. where like your, your hands like start to like kind of like seize up. Ew. And then after that, like three minutes, you, you're just doing it, like not even really thinking about doing it. And like I detached from like everything that was going on. I had this like crazy inner peace. And at the end I cried. I cried during it. Wow. It's crazy. I I could not put myself through that. You of can. three minutes feeling like I'm you can't, I didn't think I could do it. I had so much anxiety that I was about to do it. And I, I, I asked some questions like, has anyone ever died? Yeah. And he was you like, can no, if you fuck yourself he's up, like, right? no, he's like, no, no one has ever died from breath work. He's like, it is a hundred percent safe. He's like, it's a hundred percent natural. He's like, people have been doing this for thousands of years. And um, I'd be the one person to die. They'd be like, well, well, there's the first one. <laughs> she fucking threw herself into a fucking tachycardia and that was it. Uh, Dead. Um, And yeah, when I got done, I literally sat up and it was like just insane. Like I felt like I'm not like a real hippie dippy yeah, kind of guy, yeah. but like I felt lighter. I felt like I had this sense of like peace and like just like understanding. And I literally for like two hours after, like you feel high. Yeah, I heard that. Yeah. Like I have a friend, my friend's dad, um, you know, Simon Rex. Yeah. His dad is a breathwork coach cool. and he's been doing it for years in like some other country. And he said like, it gets you high. Mm-hmm. Like, cause of your body, like it's the way you're getting oxygen. It yeah. fucks you up. Like yeah. you actually get high from it. So it's kind of like. It's true. I've been doing it once a week. You do it yourself now? Yeah. Well, cause when you do a session with him, he has it on like iTunes and stuff. Um, and then he does like zoom classes to where like a bunch of people can do it. Well, everyone's on there like. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> I'm like, what is this zoom? <laughs> and it's guided. It's guided. It's really wow. cool. And then um, I did a one-on-one and he recorded it and, and sent it to me so I can just like listen back and do wow. it. Wow. Imagine like your job description. What do you do? I teach people how to breathe. It's it's insane. Fuck. And now he like you know his his, his life is like completely like he goes and do, does like TED talks and like all these like seminars with like people like Tony Robbins and like all these like life coaches. And he's like, dude, he's like, he's like, I don't have a PhD. He's like, I'm not a doctor. And he's like, you know, but I'm standing on stage with these these crazy humans. Wow. You know? and he's like, because I figured I figured this out, and it's just really inspiring. He's a great guy. Wow, that's fucking really. I got asked to do a TED talk in Germany. Really? And I said no. Oh, you should have done it. Because they were like, this is so stupid and I'll probably regret it the rest of my life, but I have really bad anxiety and can't fly by myself. Yeah. And I was like, can you pay for like my partner to come with me or a friend? And they were like, nope, sorry. And I was like, oh, fuck. Like, cause Dude. I can't go by myself. No, not you. I'm saying, why, oh, why can't they, couldn't they fucking get And one the whole extra talk ticket? was for them. They wanted me to come talk about mental health. Yeah, dude. Okay, come on. I know. I was like, by the way, like, I have really debilitating anxiety. You should know this if you're like asking me. If you me know to any of my content about yeah. mental health, like, flying is like, do you get scared flying? Uh, 
Yeah, I have a funny story though. It's like I have a pill bottle from like when I was 18 and they first prescribed me Xanax that I never took. Uh-huh. And it has like one crusty, Old dusty s- pill. Do you and have it still? It's still, it's in, it's in <sighs> my backpack that I fly with. And it's like, it's kind of like a placebo to know. I love you. That's hilarious. Just it's not going to gonna work this many years yeah, later. Yeah, I but, know. You know just but it's I mean, there. It might, hey, yeah. hey, it's there. Yeah. Uh, and just to like know that if it ever if got really like really out. bad. When I first got signed, uh, you know, I don't know if they do this anymore, but I got signed and they were like, hey, we're going to, because I was fucking, I was out of my mind, right? Like, I was Why just, were you out of your mind? I was just crazy. I was just a crazy kid. Like, I was just like, you know, fuck everyone, fuck everything. You were like, angry? Just angry. About fucking, what? I don't know. Just angry to be angry, controversial to be controversial. Just okay. like, I like stirring up shit, you know? Yeah. And so when I got signed, they're like, yo, we should, we want to, uh, we want to introduce you to this media coach, this woman, mm-hmm. you know, so she can kind of like help you like navigate like interviews and all that stuff. Uh, and so this woman came over to my house and, um, she sat with me and she was like this super, she was like 60, just like super like cool, peaceful lady. And, um, she, we ended up like just kind of talking about our lives. Like we like, we were like connect, we connected on this like weird, you know, deep level. And, um, and she was like telling me about she's like date Gene Simmons and like she like traveled with Kiss and like all these like cool bands and um and then we got started talking about touring and I was like I'm definitely afraid of flying and she's like she's like what 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 are you so scared of and I was like I feel like you know I might die in a plane and like all this shit and she, she <laughs> she's like let me see your palm and she like wow. looked at like the lines in my palm and she's like you're good she's like you're good to fly. Really? And anytime really? I get anytime I get freaked out, I just remember that that woman and I'm like, oh no, she said I was good. She said I was good. And I've been in some scary ass turbulence Have and shit. You? Oh my god, yes. Ew, I don't like that. Freaky. I had my I had a plane, um, the engine or the what was it, the landing gear wouldn't come down. And we were circling LAX for like five hours till we ran out of fuel. Jeez. And they had to cover the tarmac in rubber. And we had to land because they thought we were just going to slide on the belly of the plane. And then the whole entire tarmac was um, filled with ambulances and fire trucks because they thought the plane was going to explode. Oh, my God. That's what happens because if if the landing gear won't come down, they have to cut. They take these giant blue mats and cover the tarmac in rubber. And this was me coming back from a job in New York with some fucking brand rep who I wasn't even fucking friends with. And I was like, cool, I'm going to die with some fucking stranger. And it was for a job for Trident gum. I was like, I'm going to die over Trident gum, really? I was so upset. And I like looking out the window, and I was calling my dad, and I was crying. And he was like, it's going to be okay. And I was like, no, it's not. And I was like sending him pictures, and I could tell he was kind of scared because it was like they cover the whole tarmac in like this blue, thick rubber padding. And then the plane runs, and they they make the, the pilot fly till he runs out of gas, so obviously because gas, less explosion, yeah. right? And then right when we were going, he was like, okay, everybody, hold on. And like, this pilot said, call any loved ones you want to speak to right now. Fuck no. Bro. Yeah, no. uh, Bro. Trauma. That's a wrap. Trauma. Yeah, I'd never fly again. I literally was so scared and shaking and, and, and everyone was upset and there were babies crying and it was the most disturbing thing in my life. And I remember... Right when we were going to land, he's like, okay, everybody, here we go. And I was like, oh, my God, this is it. This is when I'm going to die. And everyone was like, ah, like freaking out. Right before we hit the tarmac, you heard, it was like, Gush, like this loud fucking thing. And the landing gear came out just a little bit, just like one one or two wheels. I think it was like one wheel, just halfway enough. To, and we bounced like a rubber ball on Jesus. the fucking it was the worst. And then we got off the plane and they had ambulances and they gave everybody blankets and animal crackers and apple juice. And I was like, this is like crazy. And it wasn't even on the fucking news. Holy shit. How crazy is that? Yeah. They kept it like really under wraps. Under wraps. We were supposed to land at like 10 PM and we didn't end up getting to land till like 2 AM. And so they, it was like, there was no news coverage on it. There was just, there was just paramedics and the people, the airline, like it was scary. I think it was Delta or, or it might've been American airlines. I don't remember, but yeah, it was fucking Never flying them again. I I didn't fly for years. I wouldn't either. I know a dude who's been in a plane crash and I know a girl actually who's been in two. Who survived? She she sent me, I, I have a video of it and, uh, she, I played it on my podcast. She survived the plane crashes? Yes. Yeah, she she was on fucking Snapchat while it was going down. 
Was it a big plane? It was like, well, it, the dude I know, it was plane. a commercial plane. The second one was like, yeah, it was like a private plane. Um, and she crashed into like the, the river and shit in New York. And everyone was fine? She was fine. Was everyone else fine? Yeah, no one died. But I had literally have like the videos. I played it on my podcast. And she was like, what? was she crying? She had like, a, she was like freaking out like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. And then like you see it like hit the water and then she's like on the wing of the plane like after it hit, like waiting to, for like a boat to like grab them. I would never fly again. It's Like I would be done. I'd be like, okay, final destination shit. Yeah, I know. Like, I got, I, so I, I escaped, I escaped unscathed. I feel that way all the time. Like yeah. sometimes I feel so, like I just barely escaped. You ever feel that way? Yeah, I f- I get more like that. Like when um something almost crazy happens, like in a car, like while driving. Oh my god! Okay, do you have a story? Oh, I feel like that shit happens to me all the time. When you're like switching lanes and there's like a fucking like. Well, that's why I have a fucking Ford Raptor. That's I know why I he pulled biggest, up and like. <laughs> that's why I have the biggest truck that anyone has in LA, and I lifted it, and it's the safest thing. You didn't grow up in San Diego. No, I grew up in Riverside. Same thing. Even do you have worse. balls on your truck? No. It's like every dude from San Diego, I got to lift a truck and I got truck nuts. And you're like, I almost did it. I got it. It's like, I like, I like kind of like being ironic. Um, but honestly it's like, it's the, I mean, it's the nicest truck. Like I could, I could have gotten, it's like fucking crazy. And, uh, did you get it? Cause it's big and you wanted to feel safe. It's like five out of five star safety rating. That's it's why like, you got it for the yeah, safety rating. It's like turbocharged. So it's like, it's faster than like my BMW that I had before it. Like I can like wow. beat crazy cars. Um, wow. And it'll take like, it has like a 450 miles, you know, gas tank. Like if I fill up, I'm like good for 450 miles. So it's like wow. five, shit hits the fan. I'm and, good. And who makes this car? Ford. But it's like, they're crazy. Ford. So it's like an F-150 on like steroids. Olympic steroids. Wow. And it's called a Ford Raptor. Um, Offset has one. Okay. From the Migos. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, and I, there's not too many so, people that no, have No, I've never here. seen someone pull up in one before. Yeah. I was really, like, wow. They're really cool. Sick. Yeah. <laughs> it's a Raptor? It's called a Raptor. Raptor. Yeah. Does truck. it have like a little <laughs> thing on it? <laughs> <laughs> on the back, it's just like a... <laughs> it's just like a claw. The back of it's really cool, though. It's like a, it's like a different like, tailgate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? It does. You know what it does? It does have it on the side. It has like a sticker, and it says Raptor and it has like three <laughs> three marks. It really does. I swear to God. I swear to God. <gasps> it's been clawed by a rabbit. Literally. <laughs> That's fucking crazy, dude. But they're cool and it has like six different modes. Like I could I could take that shit straight up rocks. Like a f- fucking 60 degree rock. Like it's crazy. Oh my God. It's really fun. Um, so speaking of like near death experiences, when I was in college, me and my best friend were driving and we were like, used to play our music so loud in the car that you couldn't hear like anything. Like it was just blasted. Right. And it had like bass and like speakers and everything. And we were driving to school and, um, I, I didn't notice that everyone around me was like pulling off to the side, you know, when a fire truck is coming Yeah, and we were going straight. And I noticed everyone was kind of pulling off, but I didn't really notice it. I was just like, fuck yeah, like go faster. You know what I mean? And literally I go through an intersection and I just, we both look to the side and it's like, and it's the loudest noise. And the fi- I see the fire truck headlight in my friend's window like this. Uh, and we just, we just fucking so made got it. Like, boned by a fire truck. Going like 150 miles an hour, Jesus. the fire truck and me. Yeah, you would have been done. Uh, I saw it in her window, like the light, like the headlight, that like that quick and like, and then we fucking just and I just went, eh, and like tried to go super fast and we lo- we missed it by the skin of our teeth, like skin of our teeth. Like I, we had to pull over and we were both just like, yeah, you, that's when you got to stop and you like take the keys out. You like you got to like walk. You like gotta like get out of the car for a second and just kind of like breathe and like think about what what just almost happened. It was fucking crazy. Like she for sure would have died. I don't. I probably would have also died. The fire truck was going so fast and we were going so fast. And the thing that sucks is that I had a green light. You know what I mean? So it wasn't like I was flying through a red light, but everyone heard the fire truck except, except for you. me because I was blasting fucking prodigy and had <laughs> speakers in my car that were so loud. I couldn't hear anything on the outside of the car. Isn't oh, that man. so crazy? That is, that's uh, like sometimes when I'm like, Oh my God, like it literally, I, my life could have been over. Yeah. I've had a couple of those. I just got a Harley too, which is, uh, he's so careful. Yeah, I know. 
I already like lost like three friends out here. I've had a couple a couple friends die on motorcycles. But uh I've been I've been riding it now because, you know, with the whole coronavirus thing, no one's really not not that many people yeah, are driving. So it's like probably like the safest, yeah. Um but you know, I'm I take it pretty seriously and like I went to, you know, the motorcycle safety course and all that shit. And I've been riding like dirt bikes and stuff For pretty years. much my whole life. But uh I even took it a step further. I got a fucking crazy uh crazy like vest that uh it's like an airbag for motorcyclists that's so awesome it has like it's all like computerized and shit you got to charge it uh Whoa. and uh if it notices anything it takes like 0. 0.02 milliseconds and it inflates and like protects all of your internals and shit yeah it's you pretty gotta cool tell tommy about that does he ride yeah does he ride hell yeah there's a fucking like chopper Oh, he's so gnarly and he so doesn't sick. wear a helmet. So sick. He's like that dude. Yeah, I feel like like real real old school dudes are like, yeah, fuck that too stuff. Too old school. Fuck like that too stuff. like doesn't like a helmet and if they had, like one time I got like a full face helmet. Oh, I got no. like he's got like got a little bucket like ding, ding, ding. like it's not going to do anything. Yeah. yeah, you need to tell him about that because he rides and he's been riding for years. I mean, he doesn't ride a lot anymore, thank God, but he's been He's fallen and he's gotten hit. Like he's had situations, you know. Yeah. And he, I feel like he's on his like three hundredth life. You know what I mean? From all the fucking times he's could have died, like fucking drug overdoses and whatnot. And yeah. he's like fucking doesn't care. But he like has no anxiety about anything. He doesn't give a fuck. That's so cool. He's so mellow. He That's doesn't so take cool. anything. He doesn't fucking need anything. He's just different cool. breed. Doesn't care about dying. Doesn't care about like, he's like, yeah, whatever happens when it happens. That's I'm so like, cool. I'm like, aren't you scared? Like I think about it all the time. I'm like, aren't you scared? Like, see, I go back and forth. Like a part of me is like, okay, I've, I've, I've missed like a lot of like crazy shit that's happened because, uh, I am like so worried about this. Yeah. Like I've, I've, I have friends who've like definitely gotten fucked up doing certain things or like, you know, blah, blah, blah. And like, I, I, I really like, I'm. I think about a lot of shit all the time. Same. I'm overanalyzing everything. And so I feel like it leads to me making great decisions. But at the same time, I think there's something really cool and just like poetic about being at peace with whatever happens. Dude, I want that so bad. Yeah. Like, I'm like, whatever, I don't give a fuck juice my husband drank when he was younger. Give I want that. that. Yeah. Because he literally gives zero fucks. Yep. Like, this motherfucker's like, I want to jump off a building in a squirrel suit. I want to fucking go, like, he does skydiving. He does fucking, that. you did it? Yeah. With anxiety? Yeah. I front flipped out of a helicopter. By yourself? Uh, with the Red Bull Air Force. So you were on somebody's back? I was, yeah, because I don't have my, you got to like get like certified to do that by yourself. Somebody. How scared were you on a scale of one to 10 though? Uh, I was super, I started getting nervous when we were like getting like 6,000, 7,000 feet up because, well, one, the helicopter didn't have doors and I wasn't strapped into the guy yet. So I was just sitting in this little thing. And if like you look down, you're out, like. And like no seatbelt, I got nothing. There's no doors on the helicopter. Fuck that. And then he's like, all right, bro. He's like turn around so I could strap you in. So I got to like hang my feet off the edge of the helicopter what? with no seatbelt. Yeah. So he could no. like strap, strap me in and that, and then like when I, like once I was like strapped in and he's like, all right, bro, he's like, put your feet up on the rails. He's like, we're going to go when you want to go. He's like, you know, and then uh, when you're ready, he's like, push off and, and we'll flip out. And, um, like right before I did it, I was like, this is going to go one or two ways. I was like, either it's going to be the best thing in my life or my life is over. And I was like, oh, fuck it. That was like that one. I was like, fuck it. And just, did it and I, I literally once I landed I was like I had this like the adrenaline energy because well, you survived had, yeah it was so fun I was like ready to go again as soon as we landed was it fun it was so much fun what does it feel like falling like that just I, can't, I don't even my cheeks were like flapping because we videoed it and shit and can like, you my, tell you're falling or do you just no feel like it feels like you're it feels like you're kind of like getting pushed up because of the wind yeah yeah it feels like you're kind of like floating and like yeah i probably f i was like falling for like 50 seconds which was cool like almost an entire minute almost falling. yeah yeah and then the longest part is once you pull the chute because then it takes like you know five six minutes to like actually like kind of coast down is it cool when they pull the chute and you're just kind of that's when i got actually more scared because i'm like all right so we're on the chute and then you're like, cool. All right, well, I wish I was down already. But then, like, you're looking around and you're like, fuck, if a string snaps, we're fucked. Oh, no. You know what I mean? Um, but, yeah, I thank God everything was great. It was so much fun. Wow. I don't know if I, if I would do it without 
I went with like these really, you know, these professional jumpers. They're part of the Red Bull Air Force. And so these dudes are telling me they, they do like 1,200 jumps a year. So they're jumping like three or four times a day. People are fucking crazy. It's cool. Like who first was like, I'm going to jump out of an airplane and I'm like fucking live like crazy. Know. When I was a little kid, I was like, why don't they just have parachutes on all airplanes for everyone? <gasps> Excuse me. Thank you. Yeah. Why not? Why not? Why not when a plane is about to crash? Yeah, you just open up the th door. The fucking yeah. airplane sides come up and everyone puts their parachute on and jumps. jumps. Yeah. People would have a way higher chance of surviving. 100%. And each little parachute could have a little tracker on it so that the Air Force or whatever could track where all the people landed. Yep. Thank you. So you just change the world with no Why microdosing. are they not doing that? <laughs> Why? I, I don't know. Because it's too expensive. Probably. Probably. I don't even know if it's a thing of expense, but maybe there's a thing where like if 200 people jump out of a plane at the same time and all open their chutes, they're all going to get tangled, tangled up together. That's true. Cause but hey, I'd close. much rather just fucking take that chance Chanson. than just like sit in a steel box that's hitting the ground. Right? Yeah. hundred percent. Way better. Way better. Way better chances. Or maybe like it'd be better if they say they like the plane is getting ready to crash. They have each person go one at a time. Go. Okay, now you go. Yeah. Okay, now you go. They could do that. The fucking airlines could do that. We need to advocate. They for, need to uh, change planes yeah. so that they can do that. <laughs> Give us then parachutes. no one would die. Give us parachutes. But then can you imagine the fucking already how long the safety instructions are to fucking get on a plane? Can you oh imagine? Oh, my God. It'd be okay, everybody, come three hours early yeah. for your parachute tutorial. And the ladies that, like, oh do it God, and shit. Oh, my God, they're all, okay, first yeah. you put it over your titties, yeah. you buckle it, and then you fucking... <clears throat> Like, you know what I mean? The then your parachute video. will inflate. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. Jump first, then pull. Yep. Not pull, then jump. And you know how many retarded people will probably be like, right as they're jumping. I'm telling you, that that has to be a reason why they didn't do it. Yeah. One parachute fucks it up for everyone. For everyone. One fucking dumbass <laughs> yeah. who pulls it the wrong time. You know what would be cool is if they created them where you just push a button and it's like three, two, one, and then it goes out. You That'd know what cool. I mean? So you don't have to pull it. Yeah, but we're, then, we're getting like so into oh, it. Oh, I know. We just like created a non, like a, a nonprofit like startup. I'm like, are we starting a GoFundMe? A business? Did we just start a business? Are we starting a new career? Yeah. <laughs> All these pilots that are watching this, like you fucking idiots. They're like, we're a bunch of fucking dumbasses. Yeah. <laughs> and we're like, all you needed to open up the sides of the plane. Everybody had their own parents. I bet everyone would get sucked up into the engine. And that's why they <laughs> don't do it. That's why they just don't do it. There has million. to be something like that. Yeah, there yeah. has to be. That's true. I mean, unless you could all go out the back of a plane. You know how like when in army movies, it's like, whoa. Huh. Well, well, yeah, these are good. Commercial well, planes the don't the have the ramp, though. Yeah, but we need that. Yeah. Commercial planes need the fucking back to open yeah, up rebuild the ramp. All come planes. out, guys. Rebuild, rebuild all, all planes. planes. Okay, you guys need to rethink your lives yeah. here. No one's flying right now. Anyway. No one's flying. Fuck it. Okay, I want to ask you just about what you have coming up. What's going on? I know you're paused on your podcast right now. Yeah, ADHD. I had to finish season one, and then I was going to start it back up, and then the pandemic hit. But Fuck. you know what? I should be like you, and I should do it from my house. You can come over here and use my stuff if you want. I, yeah, the worst first uh, background in my podcast. <laughs> you can podcast. switch it with okay. your picture. You can just switch everything. I don't care. That's very nice. To Tommy also has a studio set up downstairs for That's podcasting, sick. but he doesn't podcast. That's tight. Yeah, if you want. So, yeah. Uh, so, I paused ADHD, uh, which is a lot of fun. But I also have a ton of other shows. So, like, you know, I have my Apple Music show, yeah. which is the Travis Mill show that I do Monday through Thursdays from 4 to 5 p.m. That's on Apple Music. Yeah. Um, so, that keeps me super busy. I just launched a new show with Beats by Dre. Uh, on their Instagram live. I love that. So yeah, it was cool. I had young blood as my first guest. It was, it he's was amazing. so cool. It's great. I, I like Dom. him. He's really nice. He's a, he's a super good dude. Mm -hmm. Um, my MTV show, it's called ghosted. Oh, I heard about that. Is yeah. it about people getting ghosted by literally? By people? Yeah. And you know, season one, it's like I flew all around the country and we track, you know, these people send, send us like a video submission, uh, of like what happened to them in their story. And then if we, if we choose them, we fly to wherever they're at. And, you know, they kind of give us background and, you know, they'll give us, you know, just the situation and we'll go on social media and like utilize like all of the shit that we have and um, try to bring them together for like a, a confrontation. So it's like, you know, we track these people oh down. Oh my God, is it so awkward? It is. It's very awkward. Uh, I could never be the subject. Like I, I, I could only be the host because 
it's like all your shit's out there. It's so like you find out like everyone's fucking everyone. Oh, no. And like, you know, all this crazy shit that or happens to people. they ghosted you because they're married or something. <laughs> just like weird, you know, just weird. And it's like weird reasons. It's like the fucking mm-hmm. weirdest reasons. But, you know, I mean, I'll be honest. I thought the shit was going to be fake. Like, but it's real. I'm, all, I'm a very skeptical person, right? Like I watch shit on TV and I'm like, this shit's fake. And we went to go shoot the first episode last year mm-hmm. and um i found out very quickly that that shit is real because like i was like i thought it was like i thought this dude was like an actor you know so i wanted to like kind of like i was like oh cool we'll get a good commercial out of this right? yeah like a good promo he just so wants like, to be on tv I, yeah so like i i accused him of like you know i was like i, I got like kind of like fake not fake mad but i was just like yo dude this is bullshit da, 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 da. yeah and the producers were like yo 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 and like we cut and they're like yo um because it was on the phone and he was like He's like so. Um, he's very upset. He's crying, Aww, and uh, and I was like, "Fuck! This is real. This yeah. is like real, real. This yeah. isn't like you know TV yeah. real. This is like real fucking life. real people's lives." So yeah. I, I called them and I was like, "Yo, dude, you know, I just want to apologize." And uh, and so yeah, I had to I had to just kind of apologize for that, which I, sh- I should have done in the first place. But you know, that was like my my skeptical side of my brain. Being I'm skeptical like, too. I'm calling bullshit on this. And uh, yeah, no, it turned out to all be real. And, Whoa. Uh, which makes it like, it makes it fun to do because you're like, oh fuck, I don't know what's going to happen. Have you ever been ghosted? No. I ghosted Never? some. No, I go- I've you ghosted. You ghosted people? Yeah. So it's like you'll go on a date with somebody and like- I haven't dated in forever. I'm suck- I am suck at dating. Why? I, su- I don't know. I'm like, a, I'm like a serial relationship guy. I am a serial relationship person too. Yeah. I've been single the longest in my life probably for like a year. Got it. This long, right before Tommy, I was single for a year and that was the longest I've been single my whole life. Yeah. That's something that I'm, I'm working on now. Like not just like jumping into, uh, into a relationship. Cause I've done that, you know, ever since I was like 16 Same. and I just like jump into like relationships. They call it lily padding. Oh really? Cause it's like a frog that doesn't want to hit the water and deal with like the shit. You oh, just... your boy dealt, your boy hit the water hard. Your boy went scuba diving. Your boy in the water drowning yeah. <laughs> right now. No, I'm, I'm dead. Um, <laughs> dead. But it's cool. Cause I co-host the show with this girl, Rachel Lindsay, my friend, Rachel. And okay. She, she was on the bachelor and the bachelor. She was the black, uh, first black bachelorette. Oh, cool. She married the dude, Brian from the show. That's her. They're husband. actually married, they're married, married, married and they're happily real. married. That, and that gave me hope too. Cause I'm like, Oh fuck, this shit is for real. Like they, they just got married. Um, so you can fall in love on TV and on re- TV. it really yeah, works. Yeah, I got FaceTimer and like Brian's on the back and he's like, what's up, dude? You know, like they like fully, like it's like, it's the real deal. They're married. They're happy. So Whoa. it's so cool. I did them. not think that was real. Um, and she's amazing. Like it's, it's so much fun to like work with her. That's cool. And she gets to be like the no bullshit. Like, you know, she's like, shut up, white boy. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean, she's like, you know, she's very opinionated. Yeah. She's, she's very outspoken. Um, and she just brings that, like that, strong perspective to the show which is which is really cool i'm like you know more like mellow more mellow more like all right dude you know yeah. uh but my brain is fucked up so i just think of everything that's gonna go wrong before you know before we find out and i'm right i'm right most of the time of, of like why it is i'm like oh this person fucked that one whoa you know? that's crazy okay so is that that is that out right now or season no? one came out yeah okay um and i'm so it's on mtv it's classified whether we're doing a season two I'm sure you will. It sounds like a very cool concept for a show. Yeah, I'm sure we will too. Yeah, fuck. Wink, I mean, everyone's wink. been catfished, I think. Or catfished. Look, I say catfished. Yeah. Ghosted. Yeah. It's kind of the same. Everyone's been ghosted. I've been ghosted. It's I think it's like the everybody. new version of that, you know? Yeah. Because it's like, with FaceTime and it's like, you can't really, it's really hard to get catfished now unless you're like, Dumb. Dumb. Yeah. Really dumb. Anyone, everyone I talked to, like when I first announced the show, they're like, e- everyone would be like texting me like, dude, I fucking, th- this happened to me like last week or Aww. like, oh, I did this, you know? Um, so it's like, and it's not, the cool thing about the show, it's, it's not just relationships. It's best friends. It's, it's family members. It's, you know. Who do you think gets ghosted more, girls or guys? Ooh, that's a good question. Maybe guy or maybe girls because guys are just worse at communicating. Guys are like, cool, thanks for the fuck. Talk to you yeah. never. <laughs> yeah, I feel like girls. Yeah, girls are. Uh, girls are like, so that was really nice. I feel like we really connected. Hello. Yeah, and then a guy Hello? just like won't respond because he's just like dumb. <laughs> yeah, or he just doesn't care. He's yeah. like, I got what I wanted. That juicy puss, and now yeah. I'm satisfied. Yeah. And everyone talk to her again. Yeah, dead. But I feel like girls. I feel girls ghost guys all the time. I got friends that are girls that are like, you know, we'll talk about the show and she's like, oh, I just ghosted someone. 
I'm like, I why? I've she's never, like, I don't know. I got busy. I've never ghosted a guy. I think I've like let people down like slowly. Like, you know what I mean? Like I've gone on dates with guys where they like text me afterwards and we're like, this was the best. Like you comatose. Guy. Yeah. Like, yeah, exactly. Yeah, and then I was like, yeah. And he's like, when are we going to hang out again? And I'm like, I don't know. Who knows? You really know? busy right really now. Don't. Exactly. <laughs> Next week looks okay. Crazy. Yeah. yeah. I'm busy till like two, th- 20, 30, <laughs> like literally done stuff like that where I'm just like, Oh, I'm sorry. Like, like they'd be like, can we get lunch? Like, Oh man, sorry. Like I never like leave them hanging, but I'll be like push, make excuses. So they get the point without like hurting their feelings. You know what I mean? Okay. <laughs> I have a little bit of a heart, okay? Yeah. Anyway, so and it's been great having you here. Oh, thank We've you so already much. been here an hour. It's insane. I feel by. like you just got here. It went so fast. I know. Uh, everyone knows where to follow you. Just Travis Mills on Instagram. At Travis Mills. At yeah. Travis Mills. Um, you're, you have 1,300 shows out. I do. I don't know. <laughs> you got, do you want to talk about any music stuff? or? Uh, yeah, music is coming. It's fun. Music is coming. Yes. New music. Stay tuned. Um, guys, make sure to go like this episode and go give travis some love and uh shout out to all the other people dealing with panic attacks y'all are gonna make it through that shit panic attack gang panic attack gang gang y'all are gonna be okay as i get off this and then have one like yeah (laughs) you and i both just start hyper i'm I'm like i'll thank god that's over you run out my door (laughs) you go take your crusties yes i'm dead all right anyway guys stay safe um stay positive and we hopefully get through all the shit that's going on in the world right now i love you guys thanks for watching and see you next week on worst first Bye.